Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 15th of June 2020 and the time has just gone 9.39 British summer time. And it's been a pretty horrendous start to the trading week. Um, essentially, the big story, uh, the big stories of the past 24 hours, 48 hours has been uh, renewed fears of a potential second wave of coronavirus. Over the weekend, uh, in Beijing, there was a, a partial lockdown uh, in certain sections or areas of the city. Um, the, 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 the rise in new cases in Japan, in Tokyo, to be precise, uh, was its highest level uh, in, in, over, in over a month. Uh, and also, from the back end of last weekend, over the weekend, we've heard at various U.S. states, uh, quite a few, Arizona, the, the, the North and South Carolina, Texas, just to name a few, have all uh, reported increases in the, the number of new COVID-19 cases and this is in, in, in connection with the reopening of economies. Um, so the tricky position is the more you reopen economy, the more you increase economic activity and in turn uh, blue stock market sentiment, look how stocks, metals and energies all perform between late between late March and early June, a lot, of, a, lot a huge amount of, of, of those gains was built up on the idea governments have a handle on the health crisis, economy is starting to reopen, things are starting to go kind of back to normal, and guess what? Once the actual economies go down that route and actually loosen um, some of the lockdown restrictions, we're now seeing an increase in cases. So that, that is really spook market. So it's very much in a, uh, a risk-off sentiment. We're seeing stocks fall heavy. Uh, the FTSE is down about 1.8%. The DAX and the CAC are both down in excess of 2%. Uh, we're expecting uh, the S&P 500 to open more than 2% lower. Uh, metals are lower. Energies are lower. Um, it's kind of it's it's, thing, it's, it's, it's it's things like the Japanese yen and the U.S. dollar have actually benefited um, are, are, are doing reasonably well this morning as traders are seeking out uh, assets that are deemed to be low risk. Uh, so before I get into the indices and then uh, and then foreign exchange pairs and a couple of few commodities. I'll quickly take a look at the week ahead. Uh, on the week ahead article it can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com under insights, news and analysis. Uh, that's where the bulk of our analysis can be found. Um, so quickly running through the week ahead article. Um, over the weekend or overnight we had some numbers out of China. Industrial production, fixed asset investment and retail sales. Um, the numbers were a bit mixed. On one hand, all of the all of the readings came in below expectations, but, but on, the, on the same side, on the, on the other side of the coin, all the readings, which was by the month of May, all showed improvement in comparison with April. So it would seem that the the, the economy in China is rebounding, but doesn't appear to be rebounding as fast as economists were expecting it. So that's also feeding in with sentiment here. Um, so traders are be, traders that would be kind of possibly viewing. Um, economic indicators from from Western economies to rebound like they've done in, the, in the, like, like they've done in China but we could see a, a slow recovery uh, than, 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 than initially anticipated looking ahead uh, to tomorrow uh, UK um, unemployment figures coming out uh, early morning uh, we have full year figures from Ashted uh, London listed company which makes the bulk of its money uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in the US uh, we also have U.S. retail sales coming out tomorrow. Uh, looking ahead to Wednesday, full year figures from online fashion house Boohoo. Uh, their, their, their stock price has done quite well in 2020. Um, it's an online, it's an online, it's essentially an online only fashion house. Uh, so, so their business has actually done quite well. The high, the high end house builder Berkeley Group have full year figures out. Uh, on, on Wednesday, and we have the interest rate decision by the Bank of England. Now, it's, high, it's highly likely that rates um, not, the policy will be left unchanged. Any kind of commentary about what what they might look to do down the line in terms of additional easing or whatever, or, or, or a potential stimulus package, that's going to be very much um, uh, at the, uh, the focus of uh, Taylor's attention. Uh, Carnival Corp, uh, the cruise liner, they've taken a, a, a clobbering uh, during the during the, the coronavirus crisis because of the, the nature of, of tourism. And uh, Kroger had first quarter numbers coming out uh, on, on Thursday. And lastly, 
<coughs> excuse me, last week of the week, uh, UK retail sales will be posted on Friday morning. So what I'll now do is take a look at some of the major indices, starting off at the FTSE 100. Like I said here, we did a great run. This is a very common theme here. Late March up until early June, a great run in uh, in, in, uh, in stock markets. Uh, in fact, this day last week, the FTSE 100 uh, hit its highest level seen since March. So it's basically a three-month high this day last week. And then at the back end of last week, breaking say on Thursday the 11th, uh, there was kind of creeping fears of um, increasing cases uh, in coronavirus crisis, coronavirus cases in the U.S. So we have seen a uh, we have seen markets um, fall off, fall off on, on Thursday, bit of a rebound on Friday, and here we go lower again on Monday. So the sentiment in the last few days is certainly to the downside, um, but if we can hold above this line here, uh, the 50-day moving average. You can see here on a few occasions that, that metric there, there about actually that support. Uh, and it currently seems to be acting as support for the time being. But if you can hold above that at 53.90, uh, we could look at actually kind of pushing a higher again and retesting the kind of 6,200 area or potentially this the, the lows here from, a, from the 3rd of June in around 62.32. But if we do have a slightly break below this line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, this could take us back down towards this zone here, down around 55,800. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. Similar situation, had a decent rally between the end of, end of March into, into, early, uh, into, early, into, into early June. Markets been moving lower past number of sessions. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can see here that the market is now firmly below this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes into play at 12,146. We've fallen to a level last seen uh, basically at the very, very beginning of the month. So if we do look to kind of press on lower from here, support could be found from this yellow line here, which is the 100 day moving average and that comes into play at 11,422 and we can see on a couple of occasions in late in late May and into early June that metric acted as nice nicely as support and if a metric has acted as um, support in the past it makes it more likely it will act as support in the future although there are no guarantees but if we do have a size of break below that we could look at testing the 50 day moving average uh, this blue line along here, and that comes into play just north of 11,000, um, well, 11,071. So 11,071, you know, 11,000 is a big psychological number. So this is a potential zone of support. Should you move on lower from that, from here, once again, on a couple of occasions, the 50 day moving average actually support. So it could be an area um, of uh, of importance in the near term. If, on the other hand, the markets managed to turn around and we head, head back north again, we could be looking at retesting this red line. You know, we, we could be looking at retesting, first of all, 12,000, big psychological number. Uh, and then if we, if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the 200 moving average at 12,146. And if you, if you get back above that level, we could then be looking at retesting the high seen at the beginning of the month. Over in the US, I'll take a look at what's going on with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 both set their, their about four-month highs at the beginning of the month, but, but since then we've seen a fairly decent sell-off um, in, a, in, a, in particularly U.S. US stocks. We can see that, it, that it's moving lower. It's just about holding above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play around uh, 24,000, around uh, 24,498, so just south of 24,500. If we do have a break below that, good, that, that, good, that could take us back down towards the 24,000 mark. Uh, and if we have a decent break below that, it could take us up down to the low scene uh, in mid-June in around, uh, in, this, in this level here, in around 22,788. But keep in mind, we have very much a wider trend over the last few months has, has been in play. So if the markets do manage to, to recover a little, and it does get back above 25,000. We could be looking at targeting uh, the high scene on Friday in around 25,000, 25, 
962. Uh, and if you go beyond that, this red line here, the Trinity moving average at 26,346. I'd act as a, act as a resistance, and if you take all that, um, traders will then have their, have their sights firmly set on the highs that were posted uh, at the beginning uh, in, in the first week in June. Taking a look now um, at the S and P 500. Similar scenario here on, on the S and P 500. I've also enjoyed a major rally um, for several months, but we've seen quite an aggressive sell-off in the past few sessions. Uh, we can see here that, I'm trying to really focus in on this, extremely bearish looking candle along here. We, uh, we, we, we recouped some of the ground on Friday just gone, but we appear to be, open, appear to be set to be opening on the cash trading even lower yet again. But notice how this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, and this blue line here, the 50 moving average, both seem to be coinciding in around the same area, uh, in, around, in around 2,937, 38. So these, we can see on a few occasions that these metrics at separate times have acted as support, or actually decent enough support for the S&P. So it's likely that we could see a bit of a bounce in around here. We might have some fresh buyers enter the fold in this zone just because they've seen an active support in the past. Uh, and especially when we have the two metrics converging in, in, in on top of each other. So if we can hold above this metric, we could be looking at retesting the uh, big psychological number of 3,000 mark. And if you get beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the this red line here, the 200 moving average at 3,091. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking, well, heading back up towards just north of the levels we saw on Friday, back up towards 3,100. And if you take that out, of course, then we'd then be looking to to, to retest the, uh, the levels seen at the highest seen at the beginning of the month in around Tuesday the 8th, sorry, Monday the 8th and Tuesday the, Tuesday the 9th of June. But if you do have a size of break back below, Below the 50-day moving average, it could take us down towards this zone here, down around 2,800, or potentially even lower, possibly down to the low scene on the, on the middle of May in a 2,766. Now, I talked about how the US dollar was doing fairly well. Um, recently enough, the greenback has actually been acting as fairly decent, um, as a fairly popular flight to quality play. You know, we talked there about how stock markets in the UK and the US are racking up multi-month highs going into early June. That's when the US dollar was underperforming, so that, that's hence why the US, the euro was gaining ground. But since then, we've seen a bit of a bounce back in the US dollar, and therefore we've seen a bit of move to the lower, move to the downside in euro dollar, and also pound dollar, which we'll come on to in a second. But the wider trend over the past few months is still very much to the upside on euro dollar. So if you, while we get while we hold above this zone here in around one spot 12, uh, the wider upper trend is likely to remain intact. And we could be looking at, at um, retesting the 114 area or just north of it, the highest area in a one spot 14.22. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs set in early March in at one spot 14.95. But if you do have, if this, if the dollar's positive move continues and we see you know, further, further declines on the in the euro, we could look at reach, um, breaking through 112 and heading back down towards this red line here, the turn of the moving average, and that comes into play uh, in at one spot 10.23, or you know, one spot 10.23 is a turn of the moving average, 110 itself is a, is a, will, will be a, and a, a psychologically important metric for euro dollar, so that entire zone could act as support, and we can see in a few occasions that that area acted as resistance uh, in the, in the um, in late May. And you know, once again, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely to be important in the future. But although there are no guarantees, we'll take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. Oh, that's still on euro dollar. Go back to pound dollar again. It's a similar situation whereby. The um, pound, while the dollar was soft, the pound was gaining ground. Um, but now that the dollar has turned around, uh, we've seen you know a bit of selling pressure come under come under the pound. Um, we've seen the pound come under selling pressure. Uh, so we can see here, basically from the middle of the last month or so, it's, been, it's pushing higher. 
between late between mid May and into 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 early June. But the last few sessions has been moving lower. We're below the 30 moving average in at one spot 2681. Creeping a bit lower. We haven't gotten as low as the 50 moving average, but that area has been a, a zone of consolidation. We've seen um, on a few occasions that there thereabouts area act you know, as a support um, in, in late May. So it's possible that we could see um, support come into play in at one spot 2417. You know, that metric has acted as support in the past, so it might act as support in the future. Uh, and if that, is, if that is the case, we could be looking at heading back towards the 126 area and then up towards the Trinity moving average in at 126 spot 81. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at te retesting the high set um, in, in you know, the, the first you know, 10, you know, the first week or 10 days of, um, of June in it, <clears throat> um, just north of 1 spot 28, uh, 128.13 the highs uh, on the 10th of June. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading towards 130. But if we do have a big break below the 50-day moving average, uh, we could be looking at heading back down towards the kind of 122 zone. And then if you go below that, we could be looking at retesting one spot 2076, which, which was the low posted uh, in kind of mid to late May. Um, I will look at a couple of current, look at a couple of commodities now. Starting off with WTI, the July contract. <clears throat> So similar to stocks, go, um, similar to stocks, oil has had a decent run because of the, the because of the perception that you know the economies are reopening, therefore demand is going to be on the rise. We've also had OPEC Plus uh, introduce uh, quite steep production cuts, largely which 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 have been extended by um, one month on top of that. So we we saw a decent move in the oil market all all the way throughout the month of May. And that continued on into early June, when actually you set basically a three-month high. But now that we have renewed fears about the health crisis, or oh, are we going to have another round of COVID-19 cases? If the health crisis really takes off again, are our governments going to slow the rate at which they're reopening economies? And if that is the case, are we going to see a dip in the demand for oil? For anybody who was already long oil from quite a while back to kind of cut some of their positions, and that's precisely what we've seen. So we've been it's been drifting lower the past few sessions. WTI the July contract. If it continues to, to move lower, support can come into play in this area here, south of 132. And if you go beyond that, we could see support come into play from this blue line, the 50 moving average just north of 30 bucks per barrel. But if you do look to get a rebound from here, uh, we could be looking at retesting the high scene uh, in early June uh, in at 4043. I'll take a look now at um, Brent crude, the August contract. Similar situation, had a nice rally between late April into early early June. It, it racked up a three month high, but it's been drifting lower ever since. Similar situation. So if we look to kind of drift a bit lower from here, support could come into play in around thirty-six dollars a barrel, or, the, or just south of it here in around in around well, just south of uh, thirty-four dollars a barrel here uh, in around about thirty-three, about ninety-five, and then also there thereabouts coincides with the fifty-day moving average, uh, which comes to play just north of thirty-four bucks a barrel. So we, this is a potential zone of support should we see the oil market drift lower from here, and if you do have a fairly decent break below that. Uh, we could then be looking heading back down towards the low scene in, in mid-June. Our apologies, in mid-May rather, mid-May. Uh, and that comes into play south of 30 bucks a barrel. So, what you know, once again, 30 bucks a barrel and bread will be kind of a big psychological number. So, uh, the fact that the, the low is seen in mid-May will, will also going to be, potentially be a fairly significant area. But keep in mind, the trend has been positive for the last number of weeks. And if you do look to kind of press a higher from here, we could be looking at ret retaking 40 bucks a barrel big psychological number and if you go beyond that we could be looking at testing the highs on seen on the 8th of June uh, in around $43.41. Now lastly I'll take a look at the gold market. Now gold has been a bit of a funny one recently. Um, gold traditionally does well whenever stocks are tumbling, uh, supply to quality play and all that, but because gold is quoted in US dollars the inverse relationship between gold and the greenback has been kicking in as well. So Gold is doing reasonably well, but it's probably not doing as well as it should be because 
we're now seeing more and more funds going to the US dollar when things get uncertain. So therefore, that's kind of a Money going to the red, or else, or else, having or else, 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 or and we're not too far away. We're about forty-five dollars away from the highs of of May. And keep in mind uh, that level of it around seventeen sixty-five was its highest level in about seven and a half years. So the so the gold market is looking quite strong. But to be honest, it's been reasonably range-bound uh, the last the last few months. So, but if you get a break above seventeen sixty-five, the, high, the highs of May, that could look that could, could potentially kind of pave the way for eighteen hundred to be tested. On the flip side of the divide, uh, if we do see kind of a decent move below the 50-day moving average, it could take us back down towards the low scene in early early June, uh, and that was in around 1670. But given that th th those that level, uh, given that those levels were, were set at a time when stock markets were doing really well, and there was and there were kind of almost very few fears in relation to COVID-19. We have to kind of almost, from a health point of view, kind of go, go set the clock back to a point where traders are no, no longer fearful. And even then, the gold market didn't really move a whole lot away from the um, from the kind of psychologically important seventeen hundred dollars an ounce level. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'll, have a, I'll have a video out during the week in relation to the chart of the week video. Uh, please tune into that. Uh, stay safe. Have a good trading week, and good luck.